it's working. Oh, is it working? Oh, it's loose. Yay, we're on. Hello, hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for being here for another Wonder Wednesday, uh, Wonder Series Wednesday live. I am here today with my wonderful friend, Lisa, who I'll tell you a little bit more about in a second. So Wonder Series Wednesday live, we are here every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time uh, at, at, no, not 10 a.m., at noon to, uh, Central Standard Time. Uh, every Wednesday. And our goal here at the Wonder Series is to give you honest, reliable, and unbiased information that you can actually use and take into, um, bring into your world and create that healthy, happy lifestyle that you are looking for. So what we do here is every month we have a, we focus on a different topic when it comes to health, wellness, personal development, and fun. And of course, fun because a worth a life worth living is definitely includes fun. So we want to make sure that we're actually talking about having more fun in our life. Every week on Wednesdays, again at 12, not at 10, at 12 Central Standard Time, I'm here with a special guest um, and basically to give you those answers. You know, what are you wondering about? Let us know. That's what we're here to uh, answer. And we know January, I know it's getting towards the end of January. Uh, January is notorious for all of us making and breaking resolutions. But what's really important to know is there's more to having a great year than just one resolution. So today we're going to talk about how to live your best life in 2021, no matter what is going on in the world. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Lisa Pepper Satkin. Lisa is a integrative therapeutic coach. And what she does is she integrates psychotherapy and coaching. She's got 25 years of experience to really help people to empower successful executives and high achieving leaders to really up-level their game, their life, their business, whatever it is that they are looking to improve. Lisa, thank you for being with me today. I love being with you. I love your energy. I love everything that you're doing. It's a lot of fun because with um, without you and, and the experts at Living Healthy List, this would be just me standing up here. So uh, I really appreciate it. <laughs> but it's nice to have a lot of different other input, right? I think it's important because we all bring um, a different perspective, you know, when it comes to coaching, you know, everyone thinks, oh, you're a coach and we're all the same, but we're not because we have so many different experiences. We have different backgrounds. We have different education. Um, so I'd like for you to start just by telling us a little bit about you and what you do, how you work with your clients. Well, um, I, I love that point that everyone thinks that all coaches are the same. I mean, that's like saying all restaurants are the same, right? Exactly. We get nourished in various ways. But what I get the pleasure of doing is I have this wealth of experience as a psychotherapist, as well as being an entrepreneur and an executive coach. And I have finally figured out how to merge them all into one. Well, not finally, because I've been doing it for a long time, but I finally figured out what to call it. Mm -hmm. And so that's where integrated therapeutic coaching comes in. It's like one and done. You know, I help people look at where they're coming from, their histories and their experiences and obstacles and successes and wins and, and relationships and all of that. And then really, where do you want to go and what's getting in your way? And then I take that knowledge of their past and help them launch a different outcome in a different future. So that's what I get to do every day, all day, and I love it. It's amazing. I think the piece that you can bring to people that a lot of other coaches can't because they're not trained or they don't have the experience is that paying attention to what happened in the past, because we all know that that is important. But as most, co most coaches do, they kind of just focus on today to the future. And so you really do encompass a person's entire life to help them move forward. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we have to recognize it, but we can't sit in it. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. If we sit in it, then it becomes like this hot tub, or as I say, like your cashmere shawl, your favorite cashmere shawl, like it's just cozy. No one wants to take it off, mm -hmm. but I have people take that, that comfort off and, 
move out of a feeling state and into like a lot of self-compassion with action. Mm -hmm. And that gets us a different result. It just does. Especially when you have high accountability, like my clients have when they work with me. Mm -hmm. I think that's important because the action steps, you know, we, we can all watch, a, you know, watch another video and take another training and listen, and we even write stuff down. But if we don't actually take action, we're still in the same place. And year after year after year. So how do we help people to start to take action? Like what's a first step that people can do? Because we want to live, we all are looking for a healthy, happy life. No matter what you call it, no matter what your vision of that is, that's really the basic um, fundamental is healthy, happy life. And fun, as you said. And fun. Yes, we like to have fun. <laughs> what I think the very best first step, and I know that your audience is beyond first steps, but let's just start with the first step. And that is incorporate a new practice with a practice that you already have in place. Right. So when I'm sipping my coffee in the morning, I am simultaneously every single day without fail, filling out my gratitude journal because both are just, it just invigorates me. Right. I love my coffee. Mm -hmm. I have like my cute little coffee mug and I have my, I have my tea mug. <laughs> like it just makes me happy. Like I look for, I was so look forward to getting up to waking up each day. And then I do my gratitudes and I do my daily affirmations. Affirmations are an mm -hmm. imprint. I am, I am anything. Imprint what you want to manifest. And that's how we start to grow. That's the garden we start to grow, right? If we're imprinting our inner bully, the inner bully grows. And so just as a beginning step, find a new practice and marry it with one that you've already got going on. That makes it so much easier because it's not something that it's not, you're not necessarily just adding another thing to do. You're just kind of enhancing what you're already doing. You're sitting there having coffee and you're just enhancing that practice or that habit um, yes. with gratitude and affirmations. Let's talk a little bit about affirmations because this is one of those things that I honestly struggle with. You know, I have, I have a, I have a page, I have a page. There's like 12 of them that I can read off, but it seems to me when I do that, it's, it's inauthentic. What you just said to me a minute ago was I am, let's talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Creating those I this, ams. Oh, this runs. I, I'm so passionate about this because I just imagine a world where kids grow up knowing their I am's, right? And I created a kids program um, to help kids grow self-esteem. And I realized I actually created a program for all ages. <laughs> yeah. It's just a matter of how we get it out into the world. So your I am is stepping into, it goes into your deepest inner wisdom, your deepest knowing about yourself. And you're overriding the negative input that got planted in there without our permission. So for example, I, in ninth grade, I had the meanest English teacher and I was put in her classroom because I talked too much. Oops. And she told me I was the worst writer. I was the worst student. I would never amount to be anything. And that I, she couldn't even be troubled to teach the likes of me, right? Ooh. And fortunately I was in therapy. So I knew that that was like her self-hatred, but I can't tell you that those, some of those seeds didn't get planted, right? And I struggled with writing for years and years and years because I believed that. And so to override it, I keep finding evidence to the contrary. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I were to write, I am a great writer, I don't know that I necessarily would believe that. Like you just said, to mm -hmm. your point, like, do I really believe that? No, but I am writing or I am a writer 
and I am consistent and I am practicing and I am growing and I am a kick-ass therapist and coach. Like those are things that I believe and they all encompass writing. Mm -hmm. So you start to grow who you want to become and who you know you really are. And you begin to let go of the thoughts and beliefs and old stories that don't fit anymore. Does that make sense? It does. It does. It's funny. I had a, a similar situation when I was in high school um, and it was a coach, my coach, who told me because my SAT scores were not as high as they should have been, oh, that God. I was not going to be successful in college. I was going to fail out of college and that I should just go to like the local, the local school. And I'm thinking, I'm an honor roll student. I have AP classes. What are you talking about? But I have to tell you, that is something obviously that still kind of niggles at me. Now, I know better. I graduated from college. I did very well. I'm doing an amazing thing here with Living Healthy List. But there are still times when that little voice, and I think it's so important now that you mentioned those affirmations because there, there is so much more evidence now. To the contrary, I'm not a failure. I'm a success. Whatever success means to, you know, it means something different to everybody. Mm -hmm. And just There's that. A, that's a powerful point. I am not a failure. The brain hears failure. We can't tell the brain what we're not. We have to keep telling the brain what we are. That's why I love the I am's, right? Because if it, it's so easy to think about kids because they, they, they ignite with this work. Mm -hmm. If they see and read, I am creative, I am athletic, I am powerful over right. and over and over. That's who they'll become. That's who they'll be. Why I wonder, is it something that we're, we learn as we get older and we don't teach our children that. Maybe that should be part of the curriculum. What do you mean we don't teach our children that? Well, I think, you know, for for example, like I know when I was growing up, you know, we didn't, I don't know, it was affirmations and, and being all this positivity really didn't fit into school. And it even didn't fit into my parents' world, really. I mean, my parents were great. I mean, like everybody's parents, they did, they did the best they could. Um, you know, we didn't come with a handbook. But, you know, even things like, you know, I think of things that my mom might have said that, you know, not intentionally, but she may have said, um, and I hope she, she's going to watch this and she's going to get really mad at me. But one of the things she always used to say, and she'll still say this, do something and she'll go, well, that was dumb. And I realized what she said was, what I did was dumb, not I was dumb. But at, the, but at that age, I couldn't really tell the difference. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, my daughter just wrote my husband this lengthy birthday card. And in it were her I am's. I am creative. I am a curious cook. I am who I am because of who you've been as a dad. And I was, there it is. She knows wow. who she is, mm -hmm. right? And That's she can amazing. pull qualities from him and mm -hmm. acknowledge him through this birthday card. And it's like, I know it works. Mm -hmm. And if we don't get it when we're a kid, it's never too late. Mm -hmm. but, we, but it's hard to do it on our own. You've got to do it with some something like, living healthy list or mm -hmm. coaches or therapists or a good friend, but mm -hmm. someone who interrupts our old pattern thinking. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I was thinking, you know, when, when, you know, living that healthy, happy life, you know, best life in 2019 is to, to really think about what are the conversations that we do have with ourselves and these negative things, like how do you, how to change that negative conversation to a positive conversation? And I believe that the, starting with the affirmations is a really great start. I'm developing a program right now that's called Fire Your Inner Bully and Reawaken Your Inner Wisdom. Because mm. it is in there. It, there isn't one person I haven't met who doesn't know who they truly are. Mm -hmm. If you just take the time to be present and listen, 
right? And, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a reminder. It's a, it, it's about practices, right? We all know about meditation and exercise and drinking water and all of these good practices. Mm -hmm. This is also a muscle that needs to grow. Self-esteem, self-worth, feeling valuable, feeling lovable, feeling um, important. Those are muscles that need to grow. Mm -hmm. And we need to exercise them every single day, mm -hmm. carving out time for ourselves to exercise that imprint of who you know yourself to be, and then share mm -hmm. that gift with the world mm -hmm. in your particular way, right? It right. may not be as something big like living healthy lists, it, but it can be just in, in your conversation with your kids or with your spouse or with a good friend. Mm -hmm. I think it's that's important. And, you know, being a, and, and, and to that next level, being around positive people, that helps because when we're around positive people who are embodying all those things you just talked about, we want to do that too. And that up levels us and our mood and our expectations for ourselves. Yeah. And our level of success. And mm -hmm. I call it, I call it like minded people mm -hmm. because. I don't need everyone to be happy. I'm, I'm a very, I happen to be a very content and happy person. I have always really seen the glass more half full than not, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Maybe I have some deep, deep, dark stuff in there <laughs> like everybody else. I'm sure of that, but it, it's, it's like being with like-minded people who want to be in conscious conversation. Mm -hmm. That's why you and I connect so well too, because we're committed to growing this conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, with the last four year of four years of politics and all that, I never spoke of it because it it doesn't it doesn't merit my energy. No, I have I agree. so many other places I want to put my good energy, and so I try and only listen to things that nourish me, read things that nourish me, be in conversations that nourish me, participate with other people that nourish me and that I can also nourish, mm -hmm. right? The rest is a waste. I, I totally have, agree. I totally I agree with you. We're all so afraid of devices because mm. our kids aren't developed enough to know that what they're taking in actually is either nourishing or not, or, mm -hmm. or is it nourishing? Mm -hmm. And, and they, they're going to have to learn on their own. Mm -hmm. I, we're headed for, you know, a big wrestling match with addiction with yeah. our young people. I and agree. They'll, they'll navigate it though. They will. I mean, each generation, you know, has its challenges, but they always um, somehow persevere. The one thing, the word you, you said um, that I think is important for people to understand is the word nourish. Mm -hmm. Most people think nourishment, they think what they're eating. There's so much more, as you just mentioned when you, to nourish yourself. When I think nourish, I think body, mind, and spirit. Yes. And you touched on all of those. And I think that's a place where we all need to stop and be present, nourish not mind, body, and spirit. With that, the positivity just kind of happens. If you're actually sitting being, and certainly not watching the, the news, Apparently BBC has been really great. Just kind of giving a little bit of news and that's enough. <laughs> I love it. So, you know, we, I, you know, with everything the last couple of years, that's what we did. We stopped watching our news feeds on, on the phone, on the computer, um, Facebook, um, on the television. And we just tuned that out and tuned into something that was more positive, absolutely more interesting. And I think that's a place where we all need to kind of step back and reevaluate what are we nourishing our mind, body, and spirit with? Is it positivity? Is it negativity? Is it, well, I hate to say this, fake? Is it truth? Is it lies? Uh, I think that's a place where we all can, you know, step back and, and do a little bit more research. You know, whether it's research on yourself, who you are, what you believe or research on the stuff that's coming into your world. Yeah. I think that's a good place too, is um, 
we, we don't, we just kind of take things for face value. This is what somebody says. So that's what it is, right? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the exact same conversation with our inner bully. Someone else told me that. So it's that. No, it's not that. Mm -hmm. No, it's I, not. The inner bully is is a topic that I think for 2021 that we can all relate to. And maybe that's the, that's the the person that we need to really focus on in 2022, 2021 <laughs> to make this a great year. Fire your inner bully. Fire your inner bully. Okay, everybody, you've heard it here first. Uh, Lisa's got a program coming out called Fire the Inner Bully. So uh, stay tuned. Your, wisdom, and your inner wisdom, like that's mm -hmm. what it is. Yep. So for those of us, so for, for our listeners today, we talked about first thing to do, the first thing they can do is to, um, to well, when we talked about affirmations. That marries with, with, with a habit you already have in place that brings right. you pleasure. Mm -hmm. Your coffee and your affirmations. No, your coffee and your gratitude. The second and thing we talked about was affirmations. Yeah, beautiful. What's one last thing that you would recommend for our listeners to really start from today, moving on? We've got two great things. Coffee yeah. in the morning with your gratitude, saying your affirmations. And I actually tend to say those in the shower because I'm kind of like doing double duty there. <laughs> That's beautiful. Okay, you ready? one more thing. Yeah. Don't believe your feelings, believe your values and create value. So acknowledge your feelings, but don't believe your feelings. Feelings, I say to my clients, feelings come and go like the weather. You know, if we believe our feelings, it's sort of like walking around every day, all day with an umbrella because you may be afraid that it's going to rain. No, when it rains, grab your umbrella. When the sun's out, go sit in the sunshine. So believe your values and then create value in your unique way. It can be as big as it's going to be and it can be, you know, so beautifully helping your neighbor take their garbage cans out. It, everyone gets to do it in, in the exact right way. In their own way. But don't believe your feelings. Feelings. They come and go. You're right. Just like the weather. Lisa, you have given us some great tips and strategies to make this new year, 2021, the best year that we can live because we can only live right now. So make it a great year, everyone. Um, Lisa, thank you again. Um, we will keep it, everybody posted on the, uh, the program that we were just talking about earlier. So keep, uh, keep an eye on livinghealthylist.com and our Facebook page, because as soon as that information is available, we will share it with you. Um, I will be here again next week. Again, for those of you who are just catching, I am Denise Stiegel, CEO and curator at Living Healthy List and the host of the Wonder Series Live. I'll be here next week and I will see you then. Till then, healthy living, happy life.